Hello everyone, this is Jericho with the California Conventions blog here at KomoriCon 2023. We have a special guest interview, Mr. J. Michael Tatum. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just going to ask a couple questions since he's taking some, uh, some of his time out from the con to see us today. Oh, my pleasure. Okay, I do have a podcast audience question. Okay. So straight from your Twitter account, what the hell is a Poppin' Jay and can you eat it? <laughs> uh, Poppin' Jay is a very old-fashioned Shakespearean era word for, you know, pompous ass. Oh. <laughs> you know, someone who's frilly and very like, oh, whatever. You know, someone I would all, often play. I mean, look at me. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and I suppose you could eat one. There are laws, but uh, I guess if you had an appetite... <laughs> you could eat a pop and jay. <laughs> I, mean, I have like, never eaten a pop and jay. I mean, it did sound like a food. <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to come up with a donut now called a pop and jay. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so for my next question, you were a guest of honor at KomoriCon in 2018. Mm -hmm. How has the convention changed since you've last attended? Uh, the weather's nicer. <laughs> I think the last time I was here, it rained straight the entire weekend. Which oh, is, no. I mean, no, it's, I don't, it doesn't bother me. But here I'm like, oh, it's just nice. It's nice out. It's kind of, you know, it's nice. It's different than I'm used to. I've never, I've never seen, been able to see this much of Portland before. Uh, other than that, I, I think it's still as cool. I mean, it was in the before times, you know, so the long, long a, few, a few things have happened since then. So, you know, in hindsight, it's just nice to be able to be here again. <laughs> so, oh, um, I'm glad you're enjoying your time here in Portland. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> so in a, ooh, don't skip on the question <laughs> list. Uh, I'm going to skip around the table now just because you told me I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> in a previous panel, you revealed you had a stutter when you were younger, mm -hmm. and your experience in theater helped to manage it. Mm -hmm. In what other ways has theater and acting helped you overcome the, your difficulties in your life? I mean, it's been instrumental to it. Uh, it's made me... God, where do I start? I mean, I think I cannot imagine who I'd be if I hadn't found theater, or if theater hadn't found me, I guess. Um, because one, it did it did really help with my speech impediment, which was a real barrier for me as a kid. It really uh, kept me from having the confidence to connect with people easily because it was hard to speak to them, and it, I, I was very conscious of making people uncomfortable. And uh, so I, I, I was very isolated as a kid because of it, um, somewhat by choice, but not entirely. And, uh, and then theater really brought me out of my shell, you know, I, I had literally had an audience, you know, whose attention was mine to lose and that was a new experience for me and ha being in that, in that space just really made me say, my God, I can, I can speak to people, I can connect with people and I knew, kind of knowing what that felt like, I had the courage to bring it forward into everyday life. Um, and, and I mean, that sounds like a really big deal, like a big deal, like, oh, theater changed, but it's true, I mean, just being able to also think about people in their own perspectives, which as a young person I know did not come easily to me. I don't think it comes easily to most people in those ages because you're so you're still trying to figure yourself out. Um, and but playing another character who you're like, why why is this guy doing what he's doing? Why is he say why does he say that? Why does he do this? You know, you have to find the reasons for it as an actor. And I think uh, and in, on sta stage, unlike other forms of the craft, you really often have the time to really get to know the character and figure out their motives and where they're coming from and why they're this awful person or why they're afraid of this or why they love that. And it makes you, it puts you in a frame of mind where you're able to kind of graft that, that, that sort of perspective onto other people and be like someone who may rub you the wrong way because you, they say the wrong thing or you just meet them on a bad day because I have experience of playing characters that I couldn't understand at first, but then build a relationship with, I can now look at that person and be like, you know what, there's more to them than that. And so I've got to kind of circumnavigate my, my instinct on them and instead try to see the world from their point of view. And I think without, I'm not saying I wouldn't have learned that or it's impossible to learn that except through theater, but theater happened to be how I learned that. And uh, it, I mean, it, it's just it been an inestimable help to me. I can't imagine who I would be if I hadn't been exposed to that as a kid. So it really helped you broaden your perspectives. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like one hundred percent. I, yeah, I can't even. Like I don't even. 
I think it's done so much for me. I can't even remember the, who I was precisely without all these things that, that that those experiences have given me. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really crazy to think about, but I think that's the power of of any creative endeavor. It really does help you build perspective and kind of cultivate different points of view uh, that just help you make sense out of this thing we're doing called life. <laughs> yeah, life is weird. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's really is very weird. Life is strange. <laughs> <laughs> um. Another audience question. Mm. How do you develop your accents and how can someone tell when an accent is authentic or not? Oh, oh, oh. Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I guess, I guess the first, I mean, if, you, if you're not thinking about it being an accent and it just sounds like how that person talks, it sounds like that's usually the, the person speaking is doing a pretty good job. Um, for me, I, I just developed certain accents because of what I was exposed to as a kid. I, British came very easy to me because my speech therapist, who I had as a child, happened to be very British. And so I almost kind of literally learned how to speak through that accent. And um, even though I grew up in Texas and everyone else in my family has a very, very, like, very, very remarkable Texas accent. Um, I have kind of a more neutral tone because I sort of, it was dampened by the little British lady that used to, you know, um, teach me how to speak. And, uh, but I also grew up watching, like, PBS, Doctor Who, you know, that kind oh, of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Being served. And so I just kind of, I absorbed it. And I think because I had a speech impediment, I couldn't take speaking for granted, so I was very, very keyed into how other people spoke. Because I was always looking for like, what can I do to help this? So I'd try to like, grok onto this person and their, that little thing they said or did and be like, oh, I can do that instead. I always had to just really, I had to think about speech because it didn't come naturally to me. Um, I think because of that, I'm just always kind of listening to voices and being like, ooh, okay. And then my body, or my, my brain, my body wants to kind of try it out. Like, you know, it's like seeing someone wear a cool pair of shoes and like, Where did, where'd you get those? <laughs> it's kind of, you know, because I've just always had to think about how to speak and, and how voices work uh, in a way that I could never take for granted. And I guess that just gave me an advantage because I listen enough to kind of get the little things that make an accent what it is. So you make a man to your accent? <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, my next question. Um, it's a little long, but hopefully you can follow me. So during Anime Expo 2023 Academic Symposium, Emily Wagner of the University of Colorado, Denver, presented a panel titled Marx, Foucault, and Oran High School Host Club. <laughs> Without going into detail. <laughs> I gotta hang out with this person. She's great. <laughs> uh, without going into detail or engaging in political commentary, how do you feel about a beloved series you've worked on being looked at through a more critical lens? I love it. I love it. I happen to be a big, big reader of Foucault, and 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 to a lesser extent Marx. I mean, without Marx, there'd be no Foucault, I suppose. But uh, like, I think like there's you can you can deconstruct anything. You can take and apply that lens to anything. It's really interesting culturally, I think, to look at something and look at the assumptions that are made by this or that franchise or this or that you know property and be like, what does that say about the culture that consumes it? It's, it's, I love that. I love when people think about it. I think that's one of the big gifts of art is getting people to think about something they take for granted in a new light. Well, I mean, if you remember during the series, Kiyoya took Haruhi's <laughs> wages and reinvested them, right? How come Haruhi never gets to use her wages? Because <laughs> we never got to season two. <laughs> <laughs> We only got two. What was it? What was it? The, 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 the Marxist, the, 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 what was it? The, what's it called? The, 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 oh God, you know, the, the thesis, antithesis, uh, um, synthesis? synthesis. What's that called? The, not the triptych. What's the, that's the Hegelian term. Come on, help me out here. You just use Foucault. You open up a can of worms, my oh, friend. Oh, <laughs> um, no, no, um, dialectic. Thank you. Dialectic theory. I got it. We got it. We got okay. it. I'm very proud of us. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you were going to stop me. Bitch. <laughs> So, I think the better question, though, after that, when it comes time to eat the rich, mm. why should we eat tamaki instead of kiyoya? Uh, just to just to quiet the room, <laughs> just to, just to have some silence in which to eat the rest of the rich. <laughs> uh, 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 
Okay, I gotta. <laughs> oh, wow. you're great, dude. <laughs> Thank you. These are, this is a really good lesson. I think those are two of my favorite questions I have ever gotten in an interview. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's roll it along. In in some episodes of Doctor Stone. Magma gets the bully again several times. Mm -hmm. Yes, he does. Do you get to record with Brandon during those sessions? No, sadly, no. We don't get to record together. Oh. Um, but but we, we definitely, definitely, we, Brandon, if I record first, Brandon will come home from his session and be like, huh, hmm, I saw what you did. <laughs> <laughs> we may have a discussion over dinner. <laughs> no, it's super fun. I wish we got to record together, but... Sadly, with dubs, it's not really possible. We all have to record independently because the timing is too strict. Yeah. Um, but uh, but it's you know it's it's fun working with someone whose voice and whose style you know really well because you know one of us whoever gets to go first is going to have to record in a vacuum. But I I know Brandon's voice and his voice for that character so well that I can hear it in my head even before he's laid down track, Ooh. and that that's an advantage. And he can do much the same. I mean, we know each other's voices you know backwards and forwards. So it's kind of fun to be like to watch the final product. Like nah, that's exactly what I thought you'd do. <laughs> Okay. Um, next question. Um, how did you get to work on Iron Mouse Unleashed? I know it's only for like a few lines in that um, show Iron Mouse was watching, but you were credited. I, did I work on that? <laughs> I, just, I guess I don't. I honestly don't remember. Oh no! <laughs> I must. I mean, I assume you've done your research. So you must know. I've done but in so many things. People will be like, "Do you remember that?" I'll be like, "Was I in that?" <laughs> It has happened occasionally where I'm credited something and it's not actually me. Oh. Um, because someone just, a, a fan thinks it's me and puts it on there and it gets on Wikipedia and it takes like years for someone to correct it. So I'm, I'm not saying I'm not in that, I just don't remember it. Oh, that's okay. What was it called again? Uh, Iron Mouse Unleashed. It sounds familiar. What's I must have been. I probably auditioned for it, or maybe the director like was like, hey, let's see if Tatum was available, and I wasn't, so I jumped in and did a line or two. I don't remember. I'm sorry. It's okay. Oh. <laughs> nah, don't worry about it. Um, I do want to know, though, like, how familiar are you with C-Dog uh, VA? <laughs> I mean, he's a friend of mine. I like, I love Connor. He's a good people. He's good people. Uh, well, as an experienced veteran in the industry, is C. Davie one hell of a butler? <laughs> he's one hell of a guy. I'll say that. One hell of a guy. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. <laughs> um, last two questions. Um, would you ever consider starting up your old podcast, that anime show in the future? Oh, maybe. I'm always open to, to doing things I've, I've done in the past, so maybe. Maybe. You never maybe. know. Maybe. We'll okay. do it. Maybe we'll do a tribute show. <laughs> Any standout moments from the show's history that you like to share? Oh, you know, we just we had so many great people on that were friends we got to just sit and talk with for two hours. You know, I couldn't really pick a favorite moment. I always really liked the Halloween episodes, though. Those were always fun to do. I, mean, I, love, I love a good ghost story. <laughs> so it's fun to get your friends in there to try to just scare the piss out of each other. Ain't that great? Ain't that the best? <laughs> um, all right, last question. As a native Texan, do all your exes live there? <laughs> Uh, most of them, not all. Most, of, not all. Okay, <laughs> so the song is mostly right. It's, it's, yeah, it's like ninety percent accurate. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for taking your time uh, to uh, answer our questions and for this my, interview. My pleasure. Where can the audience find you on social media? Uh, I'm I'm on Twitter or X or whatever the hell they call it now. Um, sometimes uh, sometimes I'm on Instagram. Sometimes I'm on TikTok. I'm very I'm very reclusive when it comes to social media. So mm. I'm like a unicorn. I'm there, but I'm not frequently there. So but you can find me there. That's where I make like usually big announcements and, and things of that nature. So whenever I have something to say, I'll, I'll post maybe once in a blue moon. But yeah, those are all those are all the standard places, I suppose. Well, I'm very glad that you were able to take out some to take out some of your time for today uh, d during the con. Um, really do appreciate it. Uh, this is Jericho with the California Conventions blog signing out from KomoriCon 2023. I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs> All right, thank you so much.